Hey guys. I mean, I got a ton of messages about Bobby Borriello, why he got killed. So I'm going to explain this story about Bobby, what I know of him. He was a real good man, tough guy. But I'm going to start off where he was so you guys really understand this story. Bobby Borriello originally was with the Gallows, Larry Gallo and Joe Gallo. In the Gallo Profaci War, and in the second part of it, in the Gallo Colombo Carmine Persico War. Real tough guy. After Joe Gallo was killed, Mulberry Street in Little Italy, and um, out, he got shot in um, Umberto's clam house. Matty the Horse, a captain in the Genovese family, owned the place. He wasn't part of the hit. The hit team got in touch with him and said, he's in the restaurant, they were looking for him. We're gonna take him. Is it okay it's in your joint? Matty gave him, do what you could do. Do what you wanna do. They shot him in there, he staggered outside. I think they shot him a couple of more times and he died in the street. The war was over with the gallows. It was over. There was another brother, one of the gallows, they called him Blast. I don't remember his real first name, but he was Blast and he was a gallow brother. He was put into the Genovese family and protected by them. I believe he became a made member with them. Bobby Borriello was released to the Gambino family. Eventually he was with John Gotti. He was one of John Gotti's shooters, tough as they come, loyal as they come. He fought that whole war. And he was a bodyguard for John Gotti. One day, outside the club in Queens, John's club, the Bergen Hunt and Fish Club, Somebody threw a shot at John. Bobby reacted immediately. John ducked away. Bobby went at the guy and chased him. Chased him for a couple of blocks. Shot him. They grabbed him. They threw him in a car. They didn't kill him yet. They wanted to know who sent him. They brought him to Staten Island. Joe DeCat, a made guy in the Gambino family, had a little, it was like a candy store, a little small little diner candy store type of thing. They brought him in there and they put him in the basement. Joe Watts was ordered to go there and question him. A few of Joe DeCat's sons were immediately sent to that diner. Closed it up, stood around it, in it, outside it, and guarded it. The guy supposedly was mumbling all kinds of scripture stuff from the Bible and whatever. I was called to go down and get involved. Joe Watts reached out to John Gotti and said, I think the guy's a complete bed bug. Because of your name and reputation, he wanted to kill you. Nobody sent him, he's talking about God, he's talking about the Bible, he's mumbling weird stuff we can't even understand. Gotti said, all right, then just kill him. Joe Watts, I understood, shot him five times in the face and head and killed him and left him there and left. They were going to move the body the next day. When his son, Joe DeCat's sons, closed the place, they left the front door open 
slightly. Didn't get it closed or locked. Whatever the problem was, it's just, it happened. A cop passed by and saw the door open. Probably the wind opened it up a little bit more. He thought it was a burglary. He called other cops on the walkie-talkie or whatever he did. More cops went there. They went in, they looked at it, and they found the body. The kids, Joe the Cat's kids, and one of them was a made guy. These were all tough guys. These were just kids. These were tough guys. They kind of moved around. There was a witness that one of the sons, not the one who was a made guy, had left and closed up early. I was told to go over his house. I went over his house. I believe Joe Watts was with me, but I'm not sure. It's been a long time. I went there. I talked to him. I told him to clean up. Did he have any idea who the witness was? Who told the police that you left? One of your friends, a neighbor, somebody, who? He had no idea. I told him, stay strong. Stay in touch with me. And I'm already working on an alibi of where you are. I have witnesses and everything. I'm going to give you the exact story, who you were with and where you were and what time. If the police come to you, don't say a word. The lawyer will be there for you. And uh, you'll say, this is not true. This is where I was with these people by their house. I ate dinner. I was there the whole night, most of the night. He says, okay, Sammy, thank you. I says, I got you. Stay in touch with me or Joe Watts. He was pretty friendly with Joe Watts. And uh, kind of walked away from the whole thing. The cops really never did an investigation where they bothered anybody. Joe the Cat himself went down. It was known that he owned the place with his kids. And he said he had no idea. He had an alibi where he was. And they just couldn't piece anything together. Maybe the guy broke into the store. They had no idea what happened. So nobody got indicted on this case. Nobody went to jail. One more thing is that Joe the Cat had a strong relationship with the cops there. He would take care of them this way, money. Those days, a lot of times a store owner would pay a little extra money, to take care of my store, my business, my family's here. So I don't think they really gave a fuck one way or another that they really wanted to investigate this. They, he would donate to some police funds and all kinds of shit. So I don't think anybody had a major interest in investigating this thing anyway. Later on, after that was over, Bobby was every place that John was. There was two guys, but Bobby was one of them. Always the guy right there, right behind him. Sometimes he was armed, sometimes he wasn't. In our little war of taking over from Castellano, guys around us were killed. Eddie Lino, who was a captain, Frankie DeChico, of course, who was the underboss, other people, me and John were in prison. And we got word that Bobby Borriello, in front of his house, was killed, going home at night. We didn't know who did what. We found out later, a long time later, this guy Frankie and I don't remember who, what the fuck his name was. He was, a half, he was a made guy, tough guy, a little bit of a coke head, snorting coke and shit. He stopped his car and yelled out to him, Bobby. And he killed him. That guy was with the Lucchese family. Supposedly the order came from gas pipe. And uh, 
they were killing people around John. More or less in their mind, I believe, to weaken him from the heavyweights. I found out way later in prison. They had a hit on me too. It took a while. In the beginning, there was a meeting, I understand, uh, chin, gas pipe was in it. The boss of the family, Vic Amuso. And they talked about killing me. And I believe it was Chin, from what I'm told, said, Sammy's a good guy. He loves construction, the unions. I don't think we have to kill him. He's a tough guy, but I don't think we should kill him. I did have a relationship with him. We did have a lot of meetings and a lot of things happened. So I guess that's why he came to that conclusion. Later on, they changed their mind. They said, if and when, and they were hunting John, they wanted to kill him in the worst way. They hated him. All the bosses hated him. When, when we kill John, I thought we could elevate Sammy even higher than he is, and he won't be a problem. I changed my mind. Sammy is a dangerous guy. Chin said, and he's very, very smart. He'll bullshit us. I understand the life. It's over. No problem. We could go on and make peace. That's what he'll tell us. But he'll get even. I know that now of him. I know him well. We have to kill him. Gas Pipe and the boss of the family, Lucchese, were on the lam. They got this guy, little Al Diaco, who was a committee of guys who were running the family. Being he was the guy who was in touch with them on the lam, they made him the acting boss. One day he called for a meeting in Gargiulio's restaurant in Coney Island. My office wasn't too far from that. He had the place set up. He had uh, four, five, six guys there. Three of them or four of them were going to be shooters. When I came in, and I would normally come with me and big Louis Valerio, who was a captain, to go to the meeting, they would kill the two of us. That day of the meeting, there was a ton of cars around me. And there was FBI. I always had surveillance, but this day, it just to be, it just became so intense, I thought I was going to get busted. So I got Johnny Gamarano, who was a made guy in the family and worked with me with unions and stuff, and I told him, listen, I gave a package of money that was supposed to go to them. Give them this. Apologize that I couldn't come myself because I was having heat. I didn't want to bring my heat to them and to this meeting. It wasn't important for me to be at that meeting. I didn't know how important it was for them because they were going to kill me that day. I would have been like uh, Eddie Lino, Bobby Borriello, Frankie DeChico, Sammy DeBow. I would have been a casualty, if you want to call it that. So they were all set up. Johnny Gamarano went, told him there was a lot of heat. That's why he couldn't make it. And uh, no reason for Big Louie to go with him. He just gave him the money, gave him the message from me, and left. Now, I know some guys who were in that meeting waiting for me and told me that one of the th reasons that Al Diaco was like, terrified. There was a few reasons, but one of them that day was one of the guys came back and they were passed by to see if I was out there prior to the meeting, who was around me. The guy went back and said, bro, he's got an army around him. There's fucking cars all over the place. What they must have saw is what I saw, all those agents in cars. They didn't know they were FBI guys. They thought they were my guys in cars, 
like they were going to follow me there in some crazy way. And they were actually thinking about, let's not do this. We may be able to kill them in the joint, but if there's that many people outside, we ain't getting away. But they were going to do it anyway. And it never happened because, like I told you, it wasn't my guys. It was the FBI. I didn't go. That's why it didn't happen. And uh, I hope that answers questions about Bobby Borriello and uh, about being John's bodyguard and giving you a little bit of a history of him and what he was and what went on. And he was the guy who shot that religious guy right in the beginning. If you like this story, press like. If you love it, subscribe. If you don't like it or love it, adios, motherfucker.